What is up, everybody? Tubo vs. TV here today, and we have to talk about the newest Xbox exclusive game, uh, Scorn, which just released, which is a horror game, which has a lot of puzzles. It's a horror theme, like real puzzle heavy game. I didn't know it was a puzzle themed game before, but that's like the new revelation with the game being released. People say it's more like a big focus on puzzles in this game. I guess a lot of people are expecting this game to be like a, um, I guess like a, a action based game where you shoot different enemies, but it's not the case in this game. So a lot of people are disappointed, but the game has a 72 on Metacritic so far, uh, which is slightly above average. Um, I guess a lot of Sony fanboys have been really <laughs> Saying the most craziest things about this game just releasing. Like, we have one guy who stated that, um, Scorn is Xbox answers to God of War. Like, who stated, who would make this type of statement that Scorn is on the same level as God of War? Like, really? <laughs> they don't even got the same budgeting team. And I'm pretty sure Scorn is, like, pretty much like an indie double A game or a, or a single A game. And God of War is a huge, humongous, big budget triple A game. Like, they're not even in the same league. So, I don't know. Who do you make this dumb statement? I don't know, but you know, this is what this Sony guy is saying. Then we have one statement from this other Sony fanboy. He says, Scorn is a day one Xbox Game Pass game, and that is really the only way to justify playing it. That means this mentality is why Xbox and Game Pass are ruining the gaming industry. And it's like, once again, we got Sony fanboys saying Game Pass is just ruining the industry. Once again, this this constant fear monger that Game Pass is just the doom and is just the end all. Game Pass is pretty much the apocalypse of gaming at this point, is what these guys are pretty much saying. And this is from one review from Game Rant, which gave the game a 1 out of 5. It's like, but if you look at the Metacritic, it's uh, 72, so obviously people really enjoy the game. They, they said the game was uh, a little bit above average, so... This doesn't make any sense with this with this type of tweet right here. This doesn't make any sense. Then the last tweet that I saw was that this guy stated that he's seen today on his timeline people that were hyping up a game for months with day one, even from a few days ago. Now with this Metacritic score being lower than they thought, they are deleting their tweets, changing their mind, and still haven't touched the game. Yeah. If you are a fan of this game before and it's the, the score is not like a 72, the score has been a 72, and you change your mind after... I don't get it. Like, <laughs> unless you unless you played the game yourself, why are you just taking other people's opinions about this game? Like, I myself haven't played the game because it, the game just released yesterday. Like, I think I, my copy is still downloading, so I haven't played the game yet. But I still I look for I look forward to playing it before I look forward to playing it after the Metacritic score. Like I said before, the game is a seventy. It's not even that bad. So. I think people should just judge for themselves before just writing off a game completely. Because if you're writing off a game, then they're leading your tweets that you were actually excited for this game. That is kind of cringy in itself, to be honest. Like, at least stick to what you what you said before. <laughs> Don't change your stance up now that the game has gotten to 70. Which isn't even that bad, to be honest. It's like it's above average. Um, but you know, if a game is on a 90, then the game is just trash, apparently. Um, what else I was about to say? Um... Yeah, the game, I mean, it looks it looks creepy. It's like it's, we're, we're definitely in the right month for this creepy type of game right here. Like, I just watched, like, a few of the different Hellraiser movies, so this atmosphere doesn't really bother me. I know people, people probably are screaming shit about this atmosphere because, like, it looks very bizarre. Like, it's like you see, like, the different characters, like, flesh, their skin, and stuff like that. Probably makes somebody squeamish, but if I watched, like I said, I watched a few different Hellraiser movies this month, so... Like, if you watched a few Hellraiser movies, you can you pretty much can play this game at this point, so. Yeah, let's see some of these responses to some of these kind of different fanboy-related uh, tweets right here. Uh, I still enjoy this game. Scores don't matter, bro. Yeah, like, Days Gone was a PlayStation-exclusive game, which didn't score. It got a 70. I mean, I thought the game was okay. It could have had some problems, sure, but I thought the game was overall okay. And even some games on Game Pass that people just write off, like, um... What is it? As Dusk Falls, I really enjoyed that game. I don't think that game got a really high score. I thought that game was really amazing. Or even that um, one indie game, Tiny Can, that was on Game Pass. I thought that game was pretty fun, too. People don't talk about that game either. So, you know, you just can't go by <laughs> these big budget AAA games or what's us being talked about the most. You got to actually experience these games for yourself, which is great for Game Pass because you actually do that for yourself without really investing too much into it. So. Bruh, this game stinks. I'm so annoyed. See, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like these tweets because 
you don't even know if these guys even played this game yet, or they're just going by what everybody else is saying. Like, it's just, it's just corny, because you don't know if the game just released. Has any of these people even played this game yet? Or, uh, uh, The game looks awesome, though. I'm sure they will eventually come out on PS5. I don't think anyone ever said this. Nothing will compete with Got Ragnarok this year. Watch them act like they never hyped that up, but we have damage control to do. I have never seen anybody compare scoring to God of War. <laughs> like that is a really far fetched statement right there. Sir, seek help, you are in dire need of it. Uh, at least the gameplay and score isn't as slow and boring as modern God of War, but you still you can't compare these games. Okay. I think Xbox is just allergic to making good games because of this one game that got like a 70. Meanwhile, they won Metacritic Game of the Year 2021. So, okay, they're just allergic to making good games by this guy's statement. I like how they just like, just like completely just like discount all the bad PlayStation system games that came out this year. Like Babylon's Fall. They don't talk about Babylon's Fall because that game was a, 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 I think that game was exclusive and that game scored terribly. Now, recent like Valkyrie Elite Ecclesium game, which has about the same score as Scorn, but even lower. I think it's like a 65 on Metacritic, but you know, they don't talk about those games. But I wouldn't even say that game is even bad. It's just like, it's just that <laughs> their logic doesn't make any sense. Because if you say Scorn is terrible by the score it has, you got to say all these different places games are terrible too, because they got to run the same score, the same range of scores. So. But let's see what people have to say about this guy's tweet that, you know, Game Pass is just ruining the gaming industry because of this one game that did above average. <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. Like, you said Game game Pass is ruining the gaming industry because of the game that did above average. It's like, really? I love you, but this is just an idiotic statement, and you know I'm talking about this on the next show. Okay. Can't come up with that excuse for any of these. Just be fair and honest. Okay. It's okay that it's trash. It's on Game Pass, Xbox. That's kind of a stretch. <laughs> I'd rather have these teams experiment with different stuff that they create or be creative with different stuff than just playing the same old template from Sony games. I don't want to just play the same game where it's like you play as an older guy protecting some younger kid or somebody who's like defenseless and you're going through this big journey. Like, I don't need to play that same template over and over again, to be honest. Then he says, Game Pass is the future of gaming, also Xbox. It kind of is. I mean, that's why Sony says they can't compete with it, because it kind of is the future of gaming, but okay. Please explain to me how Game Pass is running the game industry. Because these Game Pass titles are often trash. <laughs> that is so false. The Game Pass games are often trash. That is not true at all. Gamers shouldn't be about to, to justify a trash game only if it's included in a cheap subscription service. Like I said before, why do you not talk about the bad games, the, the bad PlayStation exclusive games that do terrible? They aren't subscription services, but they're still releasing terrible games at that. Well, high, well, lowly rated games. I was just not terrible, lowly rated games on their system. It just doesn't get talked about. I wonder why. It's also confirming that Game Pass is the way to go. For this game because it's trash. Once again, how many people calling this trash have probably not even played the game? <laughs> like they were calling that gunk, that the gunk game trash too. But I'm pretty sure most of people haven't even played that game either. But they were calling that game trash, which I thought that gunk game was actually pretty fun too. So I think it's just best to judge the games for yourself and not go by these other people on social media's opinions about it. Go go with your own opinion. Uh. At least it's free. Imagine if that became the industry standard. Well, Game Pass isn't free, but, you know, you're not investing a lot of money if you don't like the game. It's like I see you trying to say. What? Game Pass didn't make Scorn a bad game? Being able to try it out for no additional cost doesn't somehow make the game worse. If anything, that's a plus of Game Pass. I can try out a new game, and if I don't like it, I can just uninstall it. I'm not seeing how that's a bad thing. I don't know how it's a bad thing either. Some of these Sony guys, they make this a bad thing. 
Like, I'd rather these companies be super creative. I'm fine with that. If a game doesn't turn out to be that great, then okay, then. Like, I didn't really invest too much into it. It's a bad thing for ponies because they don't have day one releases. Kind of like a kid who's not given a lollipop, but then just announces it as a sour anyways. The maturity of them really shows. Okay. So then, what's the excuse for this one? <laughs> yeah, it was again, Babylon's Fall, the game these Sony guys just don't talk about. And this was a PlayStation exclusive game. But this doesn't have a Game Pass release. This, this, is, this, is, on, this is on a subscription service. So what's the excuse for this one doing bad? If the subscription service is what's making these games become bad by the logic. He says, no, the toxic console warriors are ruining the gaming industry. Um, so what happens Tuesday of Playtale is good. Well, Game Pass would be great value again. You know, it's just a service and doesn't control the quality of non-Microsoft Studio games, right? How many trash PS5 Sony exclusive games don't flop this year alone? <laughs> they don't talk about the bad Sony games that come out. It's like they only they only praise the really good ones, the ones that do really well on Metacritic. This is the business model of internet thinking, but it's used in mature commodities such as games. In order to win the initiative in the games industry, Microsoft has no principles. What? <laughs> uh Taken one review to put down a game, so I guess that 65 Stevavore uh, Stev- uh, review of Horizon for uh, the Horizon game is true quality with that seven other game. Okay, why are you still so offended by Xbox? <laughs> I don't know. A guy who says he doesn't like Xbox, he's just super concerned with what Xbox, what Xbox games are releasing. But then again, when I think about it, I don't think Sony really has any major games out right now. I think the next major game they do have is God of War Ragnarok, which releases probably like in a month or two. The Road to Babylon's Fall only on PlayStation. Once again, this is a game that didn't release in any subscription service and is doing about the same amount of score as scoring. So how can you blame subscription services on this game doing not as great. I mean, it's still above average still, but it's not like it's a, one of the games. It's not it's not one of those uh, 80 plus 80 plus rated games, though. Bro, get a job. This game is good. Remember when people crapped on Death Stranding 2? Clown, that game is brilliant. Hmm. Yep, because now they don't have to make a masterpiece because they can just print on Game Pass. Where is this this logic is coming from? They just keep repeating the same logic. It's so stupid. So now Game Pass just determines if we're getting a lot of trash games or not. When it's like, what was the excuse in 2021 when it won? <laughs> All these highly rated games on Game Pass. Then like this, that's just this narrative is so dumb that these guys say, it's like, jeez. Yep, all Game Pass does is give developers a incentive to release like Lester as nobody will buy, but it's good enough for Game Pass. <sighs> Maybe they just want to keep repeating it so it becomes true at one point. Maybe that was the whole goal there, because they keep saying the same dumb sentiment in different ways of saying it, as they keep saying the same thing. That's just so tiresome to see this nonsense. Your fanboy attitude is what is killing the game industry. You post constantly on Twitter like you don't even play. This is done by Gallagher. It's supposed to be an interactive horror game just because it's not what you guys are used to as a third person over short of action game. That doesn't mean it's not bad. Most of the reviews I've read are because they can't figure out what to do in the game. Yeah, I heard this game is, is actually quite challenging. Like this isn't an easy <laughs> like this isn't an easy hand holding game, so I'm pretty sure that's, that's not that's gonna turn a lot of people off because it's not super hand holding. But if you like puzzle games, you want to challenge, then hey, this is the part of the game for you. I don't understand people can play Dark Souls, play like the Elden Ring, those really challenging games. But if you got to use your actually you use your brain for puzzles, then it's like <laughs> the game is trash. It's like is the game really trash, or you just suck at puzzle games? I don't know. Uh, LOL. What? How are you a gamer? You literally complain about every game not on PlayStation. How about you do us a favor and eat the other half of this Pegasus burger? What? Okay. Yeah, I would hate a game that makes you use your brain as well if I were you. Uh, Durr, tell me what to do, game. <laughs> yeah, it's just fascinating. How do they play games like Elden Ring when the game isn't hand but you know. 
when you gotta play a puzzle game and it kind of is not handheldy handheldy it's not just hold just it just doesn't hold your hand it's like they they don't want to play that game though Yeah, good example. They say Game Pass is terrible because of games like scoring when the game isn't even doing that bad. 72 on Metacritic. While we have examples of Godfall, which didn't release on the description service, Destruction All-Stars, what I guess it did because that game didn't, it, it, that game was going to sell it all, so they had to release on the description service. So, Valkyrie Elysium and Babylon's Fall, which all didn't do great according to their standards for scoring, not doing great. But, you know, description services are bad. It just decreased the quality while... He has several examples of Sony games that did terrible as well, but you know, that narrative. That's another way you just destroy that dumb narrative that Game Pass just ruins quality or whatever. How long is this? I'm going to conclude it right here. <laughs> I know this video is that good not long, but yeah. Once again, this narrative is dumb. Game Pass doesn't ruin quality. It's not ruining the game, as these people like to say. It just depends on if the game is good or not. From a developer's point, that's that's all it goes down to some games are gonna be good some games are gonna be bad it just is what it is and this game is like above average for most people it's like people this has mixed reviews people are saying they love it some people are saying they hate it so it just is what it is it's probably best to try for yourself before going these, before going by these guys opinions these random internet people's opinions because a lot of people saying this game is trash and they probably most likely haven't even played it so I, i'll just leave it as that but definitely want to see your thoughts down below leave a like for this video as always thanks for watching and peace